Welcome to this week's episode of the MacGasm Podcast. This week we're going to be chatting about the joystick it from ThinkGeek, uh, NBA Jam HD for the iPad, and the Spider 3 Elite. So first up, we have these nubs. <laughs> Insert crickets here. <laughs> we got nubs. We have nubs. Or teats. <laughs> How are we going to call them? <laughs> Actually, they're called joystick it. Uh, they're from uh, Wait, Think Geek. Think Geek. I don't know if Think Geek makes them. I know they sell them. I don't know if they're a Think Geek product. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, they're for uh, they're for iPads or iPhones and any games that you have that have actually a, a joystick. Um, so, so one where you move the person or yeah, both where you move the people, mm -hmm. or one with your move and one with buttons. buttons yeah. um, so it it kind of works Snap. like this. Um, you kind of just stick them on your iPad and. Yeah, move it around. But there's like this metal uh, copper wire. <laughs> it's not fucking metal copper wire. Um, it looks like an SOS pad almost. But it's not. Shut it. Um, with a suction cup on the bottom of yeah. it for to, to help it stick on your iPad. Um, it's kind to of a pain. With the suction? We like tried it with a couple games. We tried the NBA uh, Jam, which we're going to yeah. talk about next. And we tried it with... Uh, with uh, I tried it with Dead Space. And I tried on the it iPad, with Pac-Man. Yeah. Uh, Pac-Man. Pac yeah. All three scenarios, some direction pad settings are a little bit better than others. Um, I mean, they all kind of leave something to be desired. They're not superb by any stretch of the imagination. No, uh, but not at they all. do relieve fatigue in my fingers. Like uh, Dead Space, I played it for like an hour, and I was getting like my you, you get tired kind of dragging your thumb back and forth. It's true. We're Josh, reaching. Josh needs to get out a little more. Yeah, we're reaching. Get a little tired of my thumbs <laughs> and I play iPad games. Really? Yeah, a little bit. Really? Um, I didn't try it with NBA Jam. You did. What did you think about it? It was all right. I mean, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't did you prefer with your fingers over the joystick? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and there were just some times where you'd push it one direction and the one part of the, the SOS pad, I'll say, lifted up off the iPad. Yeah. Um, it, they don't scratch, don't get me wrong. No, no. I'm saying it's not bad, metal. but it doesn't it's, scratch. It's like a sponge. Um, yeah. But I mean, would I recommend someone to buy them? Probably not. I mean, it, it's more of it's a hard. novelty yeah. kind of. Like I tried it with, uh, also tried it with Hero HD, and I found that it worked best in games where you were rotating the joypad at maximum in an angle. So like, cause that game, you're constantly just swinging back and forth with your yeah. thumb. When you're making that full flu fluid motion across all the qu quadrants, like with the joy yeah. joystick, um, it worked pretty good. But if you're going like left, right, up, down really quick, it doesn't seem to make that transition because what you're saying is true. It, it, it kind of lifts up and then when you go back, it doesn't know it's briefly going back yeah. until it's, yeah. until you're already there. So if it's a quick action game where you're needing to make quick movements, it didn't work so good. The other thing in the, the thing that uh, Hero HD really knocked home for me is having this on your screen eliminates all view of that space on the screen. Uh, Hero HD's joystick, when you're out of game navigating the menus, the menus are right under the joystick. So same spot. And I didn't know there was a button there that I needed to push to get beyond until I took the joystick off. I was like, holy crap, there's a. Yes, yeah, so, but that's just there. some games with their man. Yeah. But I mean, what what I would recommend Think Geek to make is a case that has a built in Bluetooth controller that you can just pop out whenever yep. you want to play a video game. Um, but I don't think that's going to come anytime Well, they soon. make they make cases. I think they, they were one of the first, weren't they, to make a Bluetooth enabled case? I have no idea. So, do, do you think, honestly, people are going to going to be using a Bluetooth controller or keyboard case to some degree with their iPad on the go. Yeah. Like you carry a, a I controller. carry an OtterBox case on my iPad. Okay. And that's bulky as shit. Okay, so two scenarios. Keyboard in case or, or controller separate. Like would you take a controller with you? Nope. So it'd have to be something already attached to a case. That's right. Because when I leave the house, I'm gonna grab my iPad. Yeah, yeah. With the, while it's in the case, throw it in a bag, whatever. I don't have to worry about it. I'm not gonna grab my iPad, grab my controller, grab my memory card reader, grab, you know, I just wanna right. take my iPad, throw it in my case, and, and go on with my day. Um, yeah. Something that you don't think about until you start playing the game, right? Because there might be some games that you don't, or you might not even play games when you grab yeah. your iPad. But it's that one time where you're like, you know what? I have some time to kill. Mm -hmm. I want to launch a game. And then you're like, oh yeah, my case got that built-in controller. Yeah. That's the problem I have with all these peripherals and even the joystick. I'm not going to think I need to grab these joystickets on my way out of the house. 
Cool. Um, but now that kind of brings us into transition into the NBA Jam game that, that we yeah. play. Um, when this got announced... You got it today, and I've been playing it all day, and you've been playing it since we've been setting up. For oh, I've been playing it, yeah. And, and since it was announced, I was excited. Like, yeah, yeah. I was like, bring you yep. back to the old Childhood school kind of. SNES. That's right, yep. and, and just have fun, and, and EA nailed it. They, they, yeah, it really is a reimag not even a reimagining because it's pretty much the same. But it is that experience with new players. Um, they're really cool and they let you unlock the old players like Carl Malone and Patrick Ewing and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, it, it, we, we sent out a couple of tweets about that when we were playing. <laughs> but I mean, the, you couldn't ask for like a better game. Like yeah, I yeah. think it's probably now one of my favorite games on the iPad. You know, that, that's funny you say that because I think I'm the same. I played a lot of games and, and reviewed a ton of games for the iPad, but I never stick with them. There might be like two or three games I've played from beginning to end on the iPad over the whole year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, NBA Jam for me, in and out. Game, five minutes, out. That's the key thing, and it was like it's like the same thing about Xbox. Yeah. Right? We're the same. We're the same when we play. We, you don't want to play video games. No. I, I can't spend eight hours on a video game no. in one sitting. Right? No. I like a game where I can play it. Yeah. Five minutes, get my fix. Ten minutes, get my fix. I'm out. I yeah. go back to work. You get to go through all the the old teams, and you get to work your way up to the mm -hmm. top, and you get like uh, achievements yeah. um, that you you can get and use in your games. Like you get ten alley oops, and yeah. you get uh, whatever player. Something. You get Scotty Pippen. You unlock Scotty yeah. Pippen if you do ten alley oops nice. in one game. So there's like these mini achievements in the game, which is awesome, and right. you just keep playing. It's like it's so addictive, and yeah, it is. Um, so NBA Jam has been out for a while on the iPhone. Um, literally today as we're recording this, the HD version came out. Now there's a bit of a price discrepancy between iPhone, iPad, there usually is, uh, but the iPhone edition of the game is 99 cents and the iPad edition of the game is 9.99. Uh, and, and it's not universal, obviously, like you, you can't buy the iPad and play it on the iPhone. You have to buy two distinct games. And that's um, the problem, right? That's, people are charging for more real estate, but it's the same yeah. game. Um, the other cool thing about the game is you can do Multiplayer? Multiplayer across Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Uh, and we haven't tried that yet. No. Uh, we'll probably try that and report back on that in yeah. the future. But So uh, our final product that we got for you guys in this episode is the Spider 3 Elite from datacolor.com. Uh, <laughs> you sure about that? Uh, yeah. You sure it's just datacolor.com? Yeah, datacolor.com. Okay. Uh, you just you, made that up on the fly. No, I didn't. He's an idiot. And basically what it does is it color calibrates your, your monitors yep. um, for whatever situation you're in. Um, so what did you think when you first uh, tried it out? And uh, honestly, it? when I first tried it out, I thought it was garbage. Uh, <laughs> mostly because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, to be honest. Well, uh, don't hold back. Well, so it's for professionals. Like, let's be real. If you're going to calibrate a monitor at home, um, and you have no idea what you're doing, you're going to want to follow the step-by-step -step tutorial, and you're going to do exactly what it says. You don't want to make any assumptions. Uh, what I did was, was like, yeah, yeah, next, 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 next. And I started scanning, and next thing I knew, when I was done, my monitor was like this blue twinge, and I was like, what the? So I went back and did it again and paid more attention. And um, the and last thing I've today is read the fucking manual. <laughs> also, what's a twinge? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's what? A little twinge of blue. Um, so tinge? Tinge, of blue. tinge, yeah. That's what I meant to say. Um, so I went through it a second time and really paid attention to the questions they were asking. And they asked some in-depth questions, like the, uh, the Calvin temperature of your, your monitor. Um, it all depends on the monitor type, right? Like the cinema display didn't really ask me any of that, but my HP display it did. Um, and then it also asks you to adjust your settings. Just like that? Yeah, just like that. Well, that's for minor on the bottom, but. <laughs> um, it asks you to adjust the settings of like contrast and, and like whatever settings you have throughout the process. Yeah, it tells you what specifically to yeah, do. Yeah, and monitor. then it's like, okay, make this picture look like this, and you, you set your settings. That's right, so and you then pay attention stands. to the instructions. Yeah, the problem I had was my HP monitor put, so when you hang this over your, your screen, um, and the app comes up, it gives you like this box, right? right? And then this kind of shape on the screen, and you're supposed to hang this on the shape. So it, it then goes through a series of tests, like grays, and it scans the color. Um, the problem I had when it was asking me to calibrate was like, okay, go change the contrast now, or the brightness. And I did that, and the, the, the dialog box on my monitor came up right behind it. So then all of a sudden, it, it started calibrating with like dark, dark, a black with the menu, when yeah. in reality, it was looking for gray. So then I had this really bright, messed up look. Um, the cinema display worked fantastic. No, no real problems. Um, 
So, so because let me there are no on display. The first problem with DHP was user error. The very first, yeah, yeah. it was me. So but, um, after trying it two or three times, I finally got it to the point where I knew what it was going to ask. So all in all, I, it, I think it does a great job. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, you really want to cut color calibrate your monitor, say you're just getting into photography or videography yeah. or, um, or graphic design um, or anything along the lines that you're, you're going to be working with a lot of colors on your computer mm -hmm. um, and you're trying this for the first time, it's I would say play with it, right? it a couple times. I don't think it's going to it, take, a, I, I don't it think it's gonna take a, a while. Because that, it, it might take one or two times, but I think the thing is, is you specifically follow the instructions. What I did originally was when I set it up, I set up a profile and I was in a very dark room, like there was no lights in my room. That's and really I point. first opened up the package mm -hmm. and I'm just like, you know, I'm gonna try it out. The next thing I know, I turn my lights on and my monitor's all yellow. <laughs> oh, what yeah. the hell? So then I started cluing out, okay, well, if you have a laptop, it's gonna be a little trickier, but they do have a like a smaller mobile version mm -hmm. that, that you can take with you that's a little more portable than this. Um, so if you're gonna use it on a laptop and go from point A to point B to point C, you just plug it in and quick cal yeah. calibrate your monitor. However, you can take this with you and do the exact same yeah, thing. It's not big or bulky by any no. stretch. So if you're gonna throw this in your kit and, and you're gonna be out in the sun or you're gonna be in a um, in an office with yeah. fluorescent lighting or you're gonna, you know, all these different environments, take it with you and make sure you have it set up for the environment you're working in. So you know exactly that the colors you're getting are the colors that you're supposed to get and not just, oh, I left the profile on from my profile at home when I was sitting in the dark, and now all my photos that I print are turning yellow. The point that you're, you're making too is like being serious because it's not, it's not a $50 product, it's $229. Um, there's different models, like we said, this is a Spider 3 Elite. There's the Spider 3, there's the Pro, models, I think, yeah. and there's a mobile I don't have the version. Prices off the top, um, but but uh, this is like the best, uh, the best product that they yeah. have, and I definitely recommend yeah. it. Recommend people who are seriously into uh, into anything with color correction at all yeah. to, to pick one up and, and use yeah. it on their on their Macs and so that's it for this week's episode of the MacGasm podcast. Uh, you can get us kind of everywhere on the internet. Uh, we're on Twitter, twitter.com/macgasm. We are on Flickr, flickr.com/group/macgasm. We are on Facebook, facebook.com/macgasm. Um, obviously, macgasm.net. If you've never been to the website, uh, we get tons of articles up throughout the day. Um, personally, you can get me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Joshua Schnell. And I'm twitter.com slash East Scene. Uh, so if you like what you're seeing, uh, you're catching us on Ustream, we're there. Um, but we also do a podcast on in iTunes. So just go into iTunes, go into the App Store, search for Macasm Podcast, and you'll get three alternatives. Um, you'll get a Macasm kind of all-encompassing podcast where it's video and audio. Uh, you can do audio only in which you'll get our uh, weekly audio podcast um, and then the audio from this as well. Um, and then you can do video only while well, you get nothing else and just a video. So we're kind of gearing it towards whatever, whatever you like. So that's it for this week and uh, enjoy the rest of your week. Yeah, we'll see you next week. Eric, I just noticed now that some of the metal's peeling off, which is another downfall. Dude. Hey, stop. It's peeling off as we speak. <laughs>